Stress unit generation is the most important thing in the Create mod. Without stress units, your machines just wouldn't spin. None of this behind me would be possible. But which generator is the best? And why is it water wheels? Well, to answer these questions, we're going to have to look at each generator and rank them according to a certain criteria, so you can think of this as kind of like a mini tier list video. We're going to be looking at the space efficiency of each generator, how convenient and accessible it is throughout a playthrough, how scalable it is, and we'll even consider the lag impact for those who play with potatoes that have screens. First generator we're taking a look at is the water wheels, plural, there are technically two. However, they're also technically not two. To power these guys, whoops, pretend like you didn't see that. Uh, but to power these guys, you just need to have flowing water touching at least one side of them. The small water wheel spins at 16 RPM and produces 256 stress units, and the large water wheel spins at 8 RPM and produces 512 stress units. So, essentially, double the speed, half the SU, half the speed, double the SU. They're effectively the same thing, and I would always go with the large water wheels. I think they're prettier. And, uh, admittedly, they're slightly more cost-effective, because in the recipe for the water wheel, uh, to upgrade it to a large water wheel, you don't have to make another shaft. Also, more SU equal better. And just as a bit of a side note, if you're an older Create Mod player, you'll likely remember this little trick that used to be possible with the water wheels, but no longer is. They will only ever produce 256 or 512 SU. But by the way, just to show it off, you can actually place them on the ground, and you don't have to have much organization with flowing water, as long as the water flows in only one direction. So you can see in this case, water flows on both sides, it won't work. But the second I cut off the water flow to that side, sort of now it begins working also small water wheels only take up one block of size where large water wheels do take up a proper three by three area in fact if i try to place a water wheel obstructed it'll even give you a nice little outline and tell you to clear the area out a cool trick you can do with the large water wheels if you want to speed them up super easily is actually just attach a small water wheel to the end of them and it'll double the speed because the small water wheel spins at double the speed, so really easy way to get a little bit more speed out of your water wheels without having to do gear ratios. And although I'll do my rankings at the end of the video, one thing you should know is that for each of these generators, I did a speed run test of sorts to see how fast, from a fresh file, you could get 16,384 stress units from each of the generators. And water wheels took 20 minutes. What? That was way faster than I thought they would, which is insanely fast. 16,384 stress units within 20 minutes of a fresh save. What are you talking about? And I also discovered a really cool trick with them beyond doubling their speed. Take this innocuous looking large water wheel. It has the water placed on top of it flowing downwards. This is actually the most efficient structure to place your water wheels because, because, because of what you can do with this. If you were to place another large water wheel on top of this one, like so, it will actually use the flowing water from the one beneath it. And likewise, if we remove this block here, we can place another water wheel there, extending the power of one water source block into three water wheels, which is a clever way to mitigate the lag of flowing water, and is also just a really interesting way to sort of compact your stuff down. By the way, this is the amount of space you would need for water wheels to produce 16,384 stress units, or if you line them up all in a straight line, this is the amount of space you would need for 16,000 384 stress units. Water wheels are great at adding stress to your Create Mod machines, but Southern New Hampshire University, the sponsor of this video, is great at removing the stress from learning how to develop games. That is right, a college where you can get a degree in game development. SNHU is fully accredited online at your own pace, and it's even delightfully affordable, which can help anyone take those game design dreams and turn them into a career. But it's a lot more than code. You'll be learning UI and user experience design, as well as how to bring environments and characters to life in both 2D and 3D. Even better, your faculty are people with real-world experience, so you'll be gaining connections alongside everything. And once you successfully complete your degree, SNHU will be there to help you with your job hunt journey. Take it from a previous game developer, game dev is an amazing experience. You get to work with incredible people and literally meld dozens of different art forms into a beautiful final project. And it's not just for the uber smart. I mean, I managed to pull it off, didn't I? 
This art form is something that anybody can partake in with the right lessons. So check out snhu.edu slash in the description and the pinned comment, fill out the form, and receive more information from SNHU and directly support the channel. Thank you to Southern New Hampshire University for sponsoring this video. The next generator to look at is the windmill bearing. These guys are pretty cool. They can face in almost any direction and work by being connected to sail-like blocks or having sail-like blocks connected to a block like this. Sail-like blocks meaning actual sail blocks. Uh, you could use windmill cell frames. These work as well. And even entire blocks of wool count as sail-like blocks. The difference is sail blocks will connect to the machine directly, but wool blocks will need to be glued to a greater machine. So usually you use sail blocks because using a sail block sort of doubles things. And once you have at least eight sail-like blocks, it will begin spinning. You can see there's really no care for, you know, it doesn't have to be a specific size. You can make these look any way you want. So yeah, you get to be really creative with them. And as you can see, the more sail-like blocks attached to a windmill, the faster it will spin and the more stress units it'll generate. This one produces 3,072 stress units and I even glued it wrong. The absolute maximum stress units that this can produce is 8,192 at 16 RPM, and this is what that bad boy looks like. So you can see it actually takes up quite a bit of space. This is four towers of sails, 32 blocks tall. Now something you'll notice is this actually does take up a 3x3 three three space, 32 blocks long, which is the exact amount of space that 16,384 stress units, double what this is, takes up in water wheels. In any case, these are also really inconvenient when you first begin the game. I was actually surprised at how bad these were. It took me an hour and a half to make two of these to get 16,384 stress units. Granted, I got lost, so we could call it an hour 15 minutes, but still, it takes a long time because you need at least two stacks of wool to be split into four stacks of sails if you want 16,000 stress units out of these guys. Another thing, too, is their scalability is really bad, not to spoil things, because they can cap out at 8,192. They're not infinitely scalable, and they scale only up to this amount. You hit 8,192, time to start building another windmill, baby. Now, to be fair, you can build them in other configurations if you have more space, like you could do this terrible, ugly thing. Mmm, wind paddle. You know, I, I mean, they're interesting like that, but there is something kind of cool you can do with them that you can't do with other generators. Is this kind of dumb? Yes. But using a minecart assembler, you could essentially have in inventory compact portable stress units. So as an example, we'll create this giant wool cube attached to this windmill bearing, attached to a minecart contraption, and then we will power it to turn this into a contraption. We can then pick up the minecart contraption, okay, because that's how they work, and move it to some other place. It's now in our inventory, so we could place it down like this, breaking the components beneath it, and we've just instantly transferred 5,000 stress units because windmill bearings don't require anything external to function. They will work no matter what. So yeah, that's actually something really cool. They're extremely portable once you get them made. I won't lie, they're annoying to make in the early game because of all the wool, but in the mid game, you know, it would be kind of cool to have these. Just be careful about duplicating too many of them in your inventory. You don't want to overload your NBT data and then chunk ban yourself. Uh, someone on my members only create server did that recently, so just be careful. But yeah, I won't lie, portable stress units in inventory portable stress units is actually pretty cool. And now for the last piece of this puzzle, the steam engine, these copper monoliths, these tank titans, these paragons of stress unit generation are a little bit more complicated than this video warrants. So check out the video who's carded on the screen right now for an in-depth guide to steam engines but we're gonna do a little bit of an overview. Essentially, steam engines are these agglomerations of different crate components. They're a bunch of fluid tanks with the steam engine blocks attached to them going into shafts. They have to have water pumped into them and powered blaze burners beneath them. These are, of course, blaze burners powered creatively, but you get the point. This, of course, is the largest possible steam engine producing nearly 300,000 stress units. 
but a more reasonable version is the level 9 steam engine, which produces about 160, 100, 140,000 is easier to say, uh, stress units. So these guys have space efficiency absolutely down. I mean, this is all the space you need to produce 300,000 stress units. I love them. Essentially, each active blaze burner translates to 16,384 stress units, meaning that this is the absolute smallest possible steam engine. Uh, that produces the absolute least amount of stress for a level 1 steam engine, which is actually why I chose to use 16,384 as the baseline. So essentially, you would hook this up to water and have something, I don't know, like a charcoal farm feeding your little blaze burner to heat it up and then water flowing into it, and you'd get 16,384. And compared to the absolute titanic structures required from both water wheels and windmills this is pretty good oh but di jojo di jojo everyone in the shorts community says they're expensive they're not there's nothing expensive about these things this is eight copper this is nine copper this right here is three copper one gold ingot and an andesite alloy two andesite alloy for the power shaft and a single blaze burner which is four iron and a netherrack you do have to go into the nether and get a blaze, I understand, so less confident players may have trouble with that, but this is an extremely cheap, 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 cheap thing, and I was able to do it in an hour. Just one hour. Now, I did fail because of a bad seed, so this is very RNG dependent, because of course you have to find another fortress, but these babies are so cheap, and getting four blaze burners will extend this guy all the way up to a level four steam engine, quadrupling the output of this little fella for roughly the same amount of charcoal input. Powering them is very easy and portable. I mean, these guys are simple, but they're not as accessible as water wheels, and the lag is something of concern. I'm gonna run a little TPS profile to show you kind of an interesting issue when it comes to steam engines and the dreaded lag. So what we're looking at here is something called observable. These little green boxes with zero UST in it is showing us the amount of lag. Zero is no lag whatsoever. So you can see there's not a lot of lag happening. The only little bit of lag is kind of coming from the pumps and stuff. So why are steam engines so laggy? You see, my dear child, this is what you would commonly consider as a viable way to power a level 9 steam engine. About 12 lava cauldrons all hooked up to a mechanical pump, a bunch of pipes, goes into a spout, and this little loop I set up here so that it will put an empty bucket into this thing, it'll get filled, spat out, and it'll loop it through. Generally, you're going to want to run this thing as fast as possible, and you can see it works pretty well once I supply the mechanical hand with an empty bucket here. That lava will fill up, it'll spit out, and get cycled around, doesn't even pick it up. This, of course, as you can imagine, is where the problem is going to lie. What once was a lag-free and happy machine has now turned into this little problem area. 36 lags per tick, whatever that means. 48 lags per tick, okay? We've got 13 lags per tick. You keep stacking these on top of each other more and more and more, and you're gonna end up with yourself a little bit of a problem. Portal-based lava farms have a similar issue. Rotate spinny farms have another similar issue. So, unfortunately, steam engines in a vacuum are not laggy at all. It's the stuff that powers them. So, Certainly keep that in mind. Now, of course, the moment you're all waiting for, the tier list. So we're going to go through each of our criteria and rank each of the generators. So for space efficiency coming in at S tier is absolutely the steam engine. It is unbeatable. It is the goat of space efficiency. I'm going to give water wheels a C tier because they really do take up a lot of space, but windmills get an absolute up tear. A, a terrible job. Had, uh, the same amount of space as water wheels for half the amount of SU. They're bulky. They're big. They don't get points for fitting in your inventory that's not space efficiency. And you can build them in other more compact ways, but they're just bulky, annoying to build. These are my rankings. For convenience and accessibility, you know water wheels have to go in the S tier. Absolutely 20 minutes from a new save. Windmills, uh, I don't know. Windmills are hard for me. I want to put them F because the wool is so annoying to gather from a new save, but realistically speaking, once you hit the mid game, you'll be able to, you know, get the wool really easily, they can fit in your inventory. I'm gonna give them B tier, I'm gonna give them B tier because they can fit in your inventory and I think that's really cool, but 
they have a lot of problems, but they have a lot of problems, okay? Steam engines, I'm also going to give... No, Steam engines are going to get A tier accessibility. You know what? Steam engines are going to get A tier accessibility because look, look, look. They're cheap, they're copper, they're easy, okay? I think they're more accessible than windmills in the long run, right? Because you're going to hit mid-game, you're going to be able to get the windmills, but then you're also going to have steam engines no problem, and windmills get phased out and are become less convenient because steam engines are just more powerful faster. Scalability, easy peasy water wheel S tier. It is so easy to scale them. You just slap a few more water wheels. Windmills D tier, absolutely. They cap out at 8,192. Very annoying. They, they're not infinitely scalable, and steam engines, we're going to give an A tier to scalability. They're not infinitely scalable, but their scaling is really easy, usually doesn't require that much more resources, and they scale by a ton each time. Lag impact is where water wheels and windmills do get their S tier, and steam engines I'm unfortunately going to have to put in a C tier of lag impact. You can manage things, but unfortunately the more steam engines you have loaded in your world, the more lag they're going to produce. And I mean, if we look at this board, just look at what the water wheel does. Water wheel absolutely sweeps the board. And I mean, it makes sense. All these things considered, water wheels are faster. They're cheaper. Sure, they're not very space efficient, but who honestly cares? Just dig a big hole, right? It's kind of strange. Windmills are an absolute loser. Windmills suck. Windmills need a buff. I think the trick with putting them in your inventory is cool, but it doesn't outweigh the fact that if you want on-site, like, scalable the SU, just do a steam engine. Just do water wheels. You don't need windmills. They're annoying. Sheep are annoying. Now, to round this video out, in all fairness, are water wheels better than steam engines? Actually, in a lot of different ways, but of course a steam engine is going to outclass them when you look into space efficiency, which is what you're going to mostly be thinking about when making large-scale permanent factories. So, steam engines are still my beloved, windmills I will despise forever, and water wheels... Water wheels have gone up in my book.